Hello my friends and welcome back to another TFT video. Today we are going to be making a tier list out of all the traits for patch 14.7b. And just to let you know ahead of time, this is my own tier list according to how I play the game and my own theories that I've crafted for myself and thinking what's best. I know that there is a meta. I play the meta occasionally sometimes i research it just to make myself better at the game but most of the time you'll find that when i play tft i just want to have fun and make some sort of comp that i don't regularly see so that is bear in mind that is what i'm using to decide this tier list however i see fit uh, if you like the video make sure you like subscribe and comment on what your favorite trait is or what you think your favorite trait and if you dislike the tier list go ahead and dislike it that's fine that's your opinion man I don't really mind now let's hop right into it and get into the tier list starting off with ink shadow now ink shadow I think is a very strong trait at least if you use it early game um, three ink shadow gives you a freaking item man so that's usually pretty good to itemize your board right away you don't have to make a champ or wait on components or anything like that so I'd say ink shadow is pretty good the further you get into ink shadow it falls off a little bit even though it's been buffed and I haven't completely tried seven ink shadow since you need a spatula to reach seven I still think it's pretty good um, it's just like all the units to me don't really mesh well like their traits don't stack up that well like you know there's not two ink shadow snipers or trick shots so it's a little hard to make the board work if you're just going ink shadow by itself I would give it a I'd probably put it in the B tier it could be it's like a tier early game and then B tier later on, unless you hit seven ink shadow, but this tier list is gonna be, you know, whatever is most likely to happen. So you're not likely going to get, be able to force seven ink shadow every game. So I'm, I'm gonna put it in the B tier. Uh, like I said, three ink shadow is really, really good. Um, it really helps you get an item early on so you can tempo faster, but then like, five ink shadows kind of whatever until you reach seven and then you're actually really strong as long as you have good units and second let's go to artist now artist is just the way trait right like i'm gonna have to actually look that up um i know it's ways trait but i i think the artist trait is what lets them multiply the unit so I mean that's pretty good you can if you get a level 7 way and your board is already stabilized you can three star a lot of units including high cost units so I would give this an A tier sometimes you have to take out a champ in order to put way in to get that artist trait going but I mean it's definitely giving you the ability to copy champions so I, I have to give it an A tier just on the basis of that then we're going to go to Warden. Now, Warden is all right. I don't use it too often. I've seen a lot of success with four Wardens. They'll have four Wardens in, and then they'll have a really strong backline that's able to just decimate everything while the Wardens tank. Now, I don't think usually you want to go like six Wardens. That seems a little excessive, and if you don't have any damage on your team, you're not going to be getting anything done unless you get a super early set two. So I think I would put Warden at, ah, I think it's like a B tier, honestly. It's a B tier. It could go either way, just like in Shadow. If you use it successfully to scale through your mid game, I'd say it's pretty good, but it's really dependent on your items and what champions you have. So I think a B tier is fitting. I, I would even be tempted to put it in C tier because uh, the other tanks are sometimes a lot better than just wardens so I'm actually gonna put it in C tier for now uh, I'll leave it right there and I'll move it accordingly if I think that it should be 
Uh, Bruiser. Okay, Bruiser's not insanely strong. I've seen Bruiser be well used. Uh, it's definitely used in trick shot at the moment where they'll frontline trick shot, but you don't see too many Bruiser comps where you just stack like six Bruiser and call it a day. So I wouldn't even say it's as strong as Ink Shadow. It's just a frontline you know, kind of boring trait. You know, they always have a Bruiser. I'm just putting it in B tier. Uh, it's not like S tier or anything, I don't think. Uh, Behemoth. Okay, Behemoth, I think is a very good tra uh, tank trait. Even though, uh, what's his name, just got nerfed. Thresh. Thresh just got nerfed really heavily. But, I mean, I think he's still good. Like, his skill is still pretty good. It gives your units a big shield. He was probably the best behemoth out of all of them, if you were to ask me. Except for, like, Udir, who is just a really a unit, uh, an actual unit. Um, but I think it's a really good tank trait. I've seen it used a lot this set. So I'm going to put it at A tier, actually. Or at least I'll put it at A tier for, not, uh, for now. Because if I had to designate a spot for all of these tank traits, this is probably how I would go. Uh, the lover's traits. Uh, you know, Lovers just adds, like, Recon in there. I'm, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do some research to see if there's anything I'm missing, so. Uh, the Lovers trait is just Recon and Zaya getting to switch spots depending on where you place them on the board. So, I mean, it is pretty good to have that versatility, but it doesn't actually provide them with any more personal power when they're in there. Uh, I'd say it's pretty good. Uh, Rakan and Zaya as a unit themselves is really good, and the fact that you get to switch them is nice. So I would put that on A tier right here just because of versatility and the fact that it's a 5 cost and that it's very cool and you get to switch. It's not terribly strong. I, I think it might have deterred from how strong they would have actually been had they not had this trait. So I'm going to actually put it in B tier. I'm going to put it in B tier, right here in B tier. I think that's where it belongs. Let's move right along to Dryad. Now, Dryad has a lot of success with the Nar comp, and even Kindred is a little bit better because she just got buffed in this last patch. So I've seen Dryad do a lot of success, but I'm not a big fan of Dryad myself. I never play it. I don't think I've, I think I've maybe played like one or two games with Dryad. Uh, but it's very dependent on whether you're able to three star all your units, especially Nar. So I'm going to put it at B tier above this, above Bruiser. I'd say it's probably better than Ink Shadow. I think the Ink Shadow units are just a little bit stronger for the most part, except for like maybe Aatrox. Uh, so right there, right there for me, I think it would sit pretty, sit pretty. Uh, let's go to Dragon Lord. Okay, now this one I feel like a lot of you will disagree with me on, and part of me thinks that Dragon Lord isn't that strong either. But I'm a huge fan of Dragon Lord. I will splash two Dragon Lord into any comp. If I see the emblem, I'll take it every time. It's just flat attack speed to your whole board. And if you somehow end up getting enough emblems to go for Dragon Lord, you get a free board stun, which is just insane. So I'm going to put this at A tier. I like it even more than Behemoth. Behemoth, I just think, is a strong tank trait that exists. Um, so I'll leave it. I'll leave it right there. I'll leave it right there. I think that's a good spot for it. I really like the Dragon Lord units as well. Uh, Sage. Sage is really nice because you can splash it into a lot of boards depending on what you're playing. And it usually goes really well with Dragon Lord. I'll try to mix in Dragon Lord and Sage for most of my games so that they get all of the bonuses, you know, the, the Omnivamp bonus and the AP bonus which is just talking about the Sage Dragon Lord is really just making me want to play because I like playing uh, comps like this so much. So I think I would put them right here in front of Ink Shadow. They're a lot easier to splash. I don't think they're broken or anything. I think they're just good. It's just hard to play a nice, versatile, balanced board that's going to provide you with frontline and backline if you tried to just put in like Sage units. Um, so I'll put them right there at the top of B tier. I think that's a good spot for them to belong to. Ghostly. Oof. This is a tough one. Ghostly was absolutely broken. 
uh, last patch. It was just absolutely broken. You'd see at least three people go ghostly and grief each other. It was a pretty awful sight. Now you at least don't see three people, but you'll still see one or two people trying to go ghostly pretty much every game because it's a very reliable comp. I would almost put it at A tier just because if nobody is contesting you and you're going ghostly, you're probably going to do very well. Like you're probably going to top four easily and you could even go beyond that. The problem with ghostly though is that it doesn't, unless you get a spatula and go a ghostly, it doesn't really get stronger later on in the game. And this is assuming that you don't get spatulas. So I definitely put them back here back here uh behemoth isn't up there as a comp itself uh it's just a good trait for tanking so that's why i have it so high up there i can't put it bef uh you know before dragon lord or anything because uh, it doesn't make any sense porcelain right now dude dude i haven't played a proper porcelain game but i have seen i've seen a lot of people play porcelain and they are insanely successful at going this i think it's s tier honestly i really do think it's s tier just because i haven't played it doesn't mean i don't know how to uh, the comp works or anything i think it's uh, yeah i think that's staying at s tier for now because it's that good it is really that good um mythic dude mythic is mythic is awesome i love mythic it's probably definitely above this um right next to way actually how fitting mythic is really really good uh, bard has been one of the most broken champs if not the most broken champ all set uh, but just splashing in even three mythics sometimes will just make your board that much stronger it's really really good and even after the bard nerfs three separate times he is still a champion he is very very strong very good most of the time um he's a really good unit so mythic goes up there and if you can put mythic on other units while well, you have a high number of mythic units like seven mythic or something like that whatever unit you put mythic spat on is gonna be huge sniper okay now this is like i said a personal tier list so sniper to me is just so bad man Outside the Aphelios comp and Porcelain Ash, which only usually has like two Sniper in it, I think Sniper is super underwhelming as a trait. Uh, four Sniper will just get you killed because you can't put in four Sniper without having a strong front line. And if you're going for Sniper, chances are you probably don't have the strongest front line, uh, just Sniper by itself there are really good sniper units don't get me wrong like ash is really good aphelios is really good he's been a great carry um senna is insanely strong even caitlin is a really good sniper unit but i'm putting it in d tier because those are units that you use with like two sniper just to activate their trait and then you call it a day you don't go vertical sniper six sniper never happens i've never seen it work i've not gotten it to work um and I just hate that trait because it's also boring. Just like Warden. Warden's a pretty boring boring trait. So that's why I'm putting it down there. Story Weaver. Dude, Story Weaver is my favorite trait. It's been strong to some extent in every part of this set. It's very good. Splashing in three Story Weaver not only gives you an extra unit, but that unit can sunder or do extra damage or buff up your other units. Uh, I think Story Weaver is a fantastic trait. It reminds me of a lot of older traits like um, Academy and stuff like that. It's just really cool. Or any trait that lets you summon an extra unit. So I'm going to put it at S tier. I think Porcelain actually might be stronger right now. But Story Weaver is a trait itself. I definitely belongs in the S tier. It's an amazing trait. Duelist. I love Duelist. I love it in every every set, every challenger, or whatever you want to call it, every uh, rendition of this trait I really like. My favorite one was Skirmisher back in the day in like set five. But Duelist is awesome. 
they just got buffs which actually make them super viable i was trying to play duelist even before their buffs and it was pretty rough i'd still squeeze out a top four most of the time but now they're strong now you just go volley bear tristana and this duelist comp is nuts it's awesome i love that they're actually viable now okay heavenly heavenly right now is probably top of a tier to s tier uh heavenly yone is insane just freaking insane man like heavenly yone is really hard to kill it's obviously beatable especially if you stun him since he doesn't usually take items that stop stuns but i mean if you go heavenly yone right now you're probably gonna do very well in your tft game without a doubt so but since this is a personal tier list I'd even put it right here below Duelist. I think I like I just like Duelist better. Uh, it is this strong, but I view it like this, really. Like, this is fine. Uh, it's definitely better than Mythic and Dragonlord and Ghostly right now. And all of these uh, lower comps, for sure. So, right there is where it's going to stay exalted exalted as a trait i love exalted as a trait it's a very fun trait it switches around every game so it's never boring like these bottom ones it gives you flat damage percentage which is just splashable onto whatever board you're playing and according to how i like to play it's very fun it's just very fun having a different exalted unit to see if you can fit in it every game and it I like having a lot of traits on my trait wall active so this really helps stuff like that be possible so it's definitely going into s tier for sure uh invoker is good i like invoker but it's not fun it's not particularly fun it's a very basic trait and i usually splash around two of them uh, i would probably put it right here if i had to pick you usually only splash like two invoker in there's not really like six invoker comp or anything like that that i've seen so that seems very fitting to me low b tier it's whatever fortune <laughs> okay fortune goes into the s tier automatically because it is a very awesome trait very rewarding if you play it properly you get tons of rewards out of it so it is very exciting to get a good fortune game i've yet to get and, and there's like a secret ninth trait that I'm sure that not a lot of people know about, about fortune. If you reach nine fortune, you get a golden tree on the board and it's, I don't even know exactly what it does, but it has like a million HP. It's so strong. Yeah. It's very good. Very rewarding trait. I love fortune. If you play it well, you deserve your win, man. Uh, there's nothing else to tell you. Trick shot trick shot has also been really good all set i would say it's ooh, it has a hard time fighting heavenly yone specifically because he dashes to the back line and kills their carries but i think trick shot is actually like up here trick shot's really good now kaisa just got buffed too and she's a little bit more viable but you know trick shot bard's been dominating everything so i think trick shot should go up there for sure altruist dude altruist is just boring but it's a good trait and it's very splashable like like uh, a lot of these other traits are like dragon lord and heavenly it's very splashable i wouldn't say it's better than sage but i'd probably put it around here uh, according to my play style it's just really splashable and nice it's very good uh think this is good uh, i'm looking at mythic right now and i'm like should i move that up higher i think the trade itself is just stronger than the artist trade the artist trade is just really good so it definitely belongs in at least a tier but mythic is just really strong umbral hmm umbral uh i don't know man i've tried going umbral a million times and i feel like i do about dryad i'd probably place it a little higher than dryad because yone is the carry and i really like yone so i'd probably put it like right here it wouldn't really feel right to put it in any anything higher than a b tier uh maybe a little bit higher than ink shadow but it's kind of meh for me arcanist 
Now, I know Arcanist is really strong. So, I mean, it, it goes hand in hand with this Porcelain comp. You go Porcelain Arcanist now, and it's pretty good. I like Arcanist. I'd say that's part of the... It's kind of like Ghostly, whether... Depends really heavily whether you're being contested or not. And depending on whether you're being contested, it's really good. If you're not being contested, you're going to hit all your units. It's going to be good a good game. If you are being contested, then it kind of falls off really hard. You can't three-star all your units, and it's kind of like pretty mediocre. So I'm going to put it in the A tier. Low A tier. Low A tier for sure. Faded. I love this comp. Faded is awesome, and I like the effects that it uses. It used to be very, very overpowered when Aphelios and Thresh were a thing. You would just three-star either one of them. Thresh was unkillable, and it was really good. But it's fallen off pretty hard. I'd say it's been nerfed very heavily, which it deserved. It was way too strong. So I'm going to put them... They're higher than Sage, and they're higher than these other traits for me. But I couldn't put them higher than a B tier because... I only would play them if I was given all the units for free. If not, then it's kind of whatever. Uh, great. The Wukong. Ooh, Wukong is, Wukong is popping off right now. I think he belongs right up here, right above Heavenly, because you do play him in Heavenly comps usually if you want him to succeed. Or you could just splash him, and this is just his ability. So his ability is able to stun, and it does quite a lot of stuff. But you need to have him itemized to make sure that he doesn't die right away. So he definitely needs items to be good. Uh, I wouldn't put him up here, actually. I wouldn't... Right there. Like, high A tier. But not above Dragon Lord. Yeah. I'd say this is a little bit better. And you know what? There. There we go. There we go. Now we've adjusted the, tr the list. And Reaper. Ooh, where do we put Reaper? It's definitely not D tier. It's not C tier. It is B tier. Like, if you're going Reaper by itself, I'd say it's pretty B tier. It's not that great. The Reaper Yone is really what you want to do. The Heavenly Yone comp is really what you want to do right now. So you don't want to just go full Reaper. You could. And if you play it very well, you could end up placing really high with Reapers. But you still need to splash something else. So I'd say Reaper by itself. I'd rather be playing Sage. I'd rather splash some Altruists. I'd put it right there. I'd put it right there. It doesn't really belong any higher than that. Especially compared to the other traits. So yeah. I think I feel good about this. Porcelain being number one. I don't even like Porcelain. But it is just so strong right now. I'm going to do this because I like Story Weaver better. And I'd go this every time over Story Weaver, even though that's super strong. But I think that's it. That is my definitive tier list for patch 14.7B for TFT. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe. And leave me a comment telling me what your favorite trade is. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you later.